Good morning everyone and welcome to the William Merritt Centre Tech and Toys webinar. The William Merritt Centre and Forum Central have brought together a series of live and on-demand content between the 1st and 4th of December to celebrate International Day of Disabled People 2020. If you would like more information or to book some of the other events, please find a link in the chat. Um, if you need captions, please click the CC button at the bottom of the screen or if you need BSL interpretation, please pin the interpreter Melissa to your screen by clicking the three dots and then clicking pin video. This session will be recorded and if you would not like it recording, please let me know in the chat area. Um, and please can you also rename yourself on the screen so we know who is in attendance. Um, so now I'm going to go over to the William Merritt Centre Tech and Toys webinar. William Merritt Centre Occupational Therapist will be available at the end for a live Q&A session. The William Merritt Centre is a charity offering impartial information, advice and assessments to disabled adults and children to make day-to-day -day life more comfortable and enable greater independence. We provide a range of assessments from kitchen and bathroom adaptations to switches and technology. We can also help you get about, whether that's with a scooter, wheelchair, buggy or a stairlift. Or perhaps if you're planning a trip further afield, we can provide driving assessments to help you keep driving for longer. We also provide driving lessons and advise on vehicle adaptions for you as a driver or your passengers including a car seat clinic, which ensures your child's car seat is fit for purpose. At the centre, we also provide try before you fly assessments. This means you can get advice, information and equipment so that you can fly more comfortably. Other service we offer include moving and handling training, room hire and tour bookings. Thanks for listening. Now our occupational therapist and occupational therapist assistant will give you further information on our technology services. The starting point for switches assessments at the technology centre would be switch access assessments for toys. So this is where we look at cause and effect. So children can borrow toys where they can practice cause and effect at home. This thing can then build on to making choices using two switches, again, which can be used on different types of toys. Progression on from that would be onto accessible gaming, where you can access different games consoles using a variety of switches and joysticks. We also offer assessments for access to phones. So again, by either switch access or through inbuilt accessibility features. We also look at environmental controls, which can be accessed through various devices, including your phone, iPads, and standalone equipment. And we also look at computer access. So we have a variety of keyboards and joysticks, and again, can look at inbuilt features on a computer. Switches, they start out really simple. If somebody starts out at a young age, you will start with a switch that you can use with a toy and that's cause and effect, press the button, something's going to happen. As that child then gets older, you can start looking into um, what else they can do with that switch because toys, you know, they're okay when they're younger, but you get older, you know, you or I don't want to play with a, a toy, we want to be able to do other things. So switches can be used um, for a variety of things They can be used for environmental control, so you can control your environment. They can be used to operate a powered wheelchair. They can be used to control a phone, a tablet, a computer, pretty much anything you can use a switch with. So we have the jelly bean switch and the smoothie switch in large and medium size. The large size is good if you need a bigger surface area. Smoothie is good if you need low sides around the edge. The spec switch has a smaller surface area and it's good when used as on a headrest, on a wheelchair, or as a finger switch. The micro light and power pad switches are light touch switches, so are useful for people that cannot apply much pressure on the switch. This is an example of where switches can be located on a wheelchair for use. You've got your headrest. It can be mounted in a midline position. You're using at your elbow the armrest, next to the joystick, 
go on the foot plates. So here at the centre we have a switch adapter toy library that anyone can access. So people can come in and borrow a switch adapted toy and the switch for a period of three weeks at a time. These are a range of switches that you can borrow from the toy library. When they return a toy, they can then borrow another one for another three week period. This allows children to play with different types of toys at home before identifying which toy the family would like to purchase for the child. If you've got your own toys at home or you want to buy some toys that you're then going to want adapting to be used with a switch, all you have to do is if your phone is up here at the centre and arrange to bring your toys in um, and then we can have a quick look at them and let you know whether it's even going to be an option to switch adapt them and then you can just leave them with us, give us a couple of weeks, we'll get them adapted and let you know when they're ready. All we ask is for a small donation to, the, to our charity. With reference to adapting for switches, we can adapt most battery operated toys that have an on and off switch or a button on them. For example, just a soft toy here. If it's got a button on its palm or its foot or in its tummy, those kind of toys are perfect. So this one's got one on its foot here. So you can, you can hear that clicking. That's, that's a button inside. So I can then adapt it so that you can plug a switch in. A bit like Paddington is here. So he's now got some sockets coming out that you can plug your switches in. What we don't want is toys like this. So this has got lots of different buttons, therefore you would need a, a switch for every single button on there, which just won't work and isn't practical. And this is Olive. Olive is 18 months old and has quadriplegic cerebral palsy, which means it's difficult for Olive to move and control her limbs, which means it's very difficult for Olive to play um, we found out about the William Merritt Centre through our occupational therapist who recommended that we come here to try some different switch adapted toys for Olive. We sat down with Sophie and she helped us try a lot of different switches to work out which ones Olive particularly worked, which ones particularly worked for Olive. And we found one that worked, as you can see, she's already loving looking at the toys and doesn't want me to talk. Um, this means that we, we now borrow some switches from William Merritt. We also borrow switch adapted toys, which means at home Olive can play on her own, which she's very keen to do. Uh, it means that I can sit down and have a cup of tea. And it gives Olive some independence that she's never had before. Um, Looking to the future, we've learned about lots of different um, items that are available for Olive, such as adapted iPads, that means she will be able to play, and ad uh, adapted um, whizzy bugs, which means she'll be able to move around, which means that we're really excited about what is available to Olive in the future, rather than feeling like she's unable to join in with people. Um, yeah. Getting help from the William Merritt Centre means that she can join in and can have fun. Here at the William Merritt Centre we've got a few sort of different options for gaming. Uh, it mainly depends on what kind of console somebody wants to play on. Uh, the most accessible console at the moment is the Xbox One, mainly because Xbox have developed a adaptive controller. Uh, this adaptive controller allows you to plug in switches into the back and also USB joysticks into the side. So instead of using a standard controller, where you have to navigate two joysticks, fiddly buttons, and be able to hold it, we can then split that down into a single joystick like this, or like this one, and then multiple switches um, that can be placed on a lap, like on a tray like this, or they can be mounted on your wheelchair or wherever it needs it. And the switch then replaces the individual buttons on there. And then that allows you to be able to play the games. We set things up differently depending on what kind of game you want to be able to play. A lot of people say, you know, that they're sick of sitting at home watching siblings play the games by, you know, and they're just watching. So they're sat back, they're watching other people play and they, they just want to get stuck in and do it themselves. Um, so we've seen a variety of people that, that, you know, they've come in, they've not been able to play at all and they've gone away being able to to fully play a game on their own without help from anybody else. Some people do just sit back and watch and they don't always know that they can be involved 
and being involved, you know, puts them on a level playing field with, with other peers of the same, you know, people at school with their siblings and they can, you know, it's, it's a common interest that people have. Um, it's, and it's, it's mainstream equipment that you're just making accessible. It's not really a specialist piece of equipment. Here at the centre we offer accessible gaming assessments. So simply phone the centre up, explain you know, that you're wanting to look into gaming, um, that you're struggling with a standard controller, and then we can look at different options. You can come on in and we can try, we can try them all and see what works for you. Um, and then advise you as to where to go from there. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Um, now it's over to our occupational therapist if anyone has any questions about what they've seen today. Any questions or? Hi there, yeah, uh, can I use my buddy button switch on the iPad or iPhone? Hi, was that Hannah? Sorry, can I just um, interrupt there? I didn't, I missed which switch, did you say? On the iPad? Sorry, yeah, it's the buddy button, can buddy I use button. it on my iPad or iPhone? So, um, the answer to that, Hannah, is any any switch that's got a 3.5 millimetre jack on the end, which is most switches these days, um, you can use on an iPhone or an iPad. Um, you just need some kind of interface to get it connected. So that could be something Bluetooth or something wired. And then it depends how you then want to use your iPad, whether it's simple games for cause and effect or whether you entirely want to control your iPad in that way. Um, but that's all down to the setup and the accessibility features in it as well. So the, the simple answer is yes. Perfect. And Alison, did you Thank have you. a question there? Just to ask um, what audio aspects can be utilised once you've got it switching? As in, is there a, a, an audio override where you can say on off? For for what kind of for what kind of things are we talking? If you were about? if you were linking up, say, for an, uh, an Xbox, and you you were using the uh, panel that you demonstrated on the on the video, and you'd got that, is it possible then to? make um, an adaptation so that you can audio over, say pad one, pad two, pad three, that kind of thing? Um, the, I don't actually know is the answer. <laughs> um, so you can get like um, switches that you don't actually require to press at all. Um, you can get switches that are activated by audio. So that would be a way to activate a switch. Um, but we don't have much success with those because they're very, it's like anything with soft speech recognition, they're not super accurate as, as far as- Temperamental, you know, temperamental. Yeah, a, a definite press of a switch is a definite press. Whereas when it's listening out all the time and then there's audio within the games that's, that you need to listen out for or that you have in the background. And then you need to be in an entirely quiet room as well where nothing else is going on. Um, but there are other ways as well to actually control games consoles with your voice. We actually don't touch on that here at the center, but there is a charity called Special Effects who do a lot more work with that kind of thing. And also they do a lot of work with eye gaze control on playing games as well. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions at all? Yeah, sorry, me again. Um... What's the maximum amount of switches that you could plug into a toy? I'll let you answer that one, Sophie. And so it's more about how many switches people can use themselves. So if someone can't use more than two switches, then you don't want to be adding on any more switches to a toy because they can't then actually access them. So it's more about what the person can physically use. Also, if they can access quite a few different switches, we wouldn't recommend more than four, just because it can get more complicated. The person has to remember what each switch is assigned to. You need to be able to um, mount or position the switches. So if you're using a tray, probably you won't be able to get more than four on a tray. 
So we'd say approximately four, obviously you can do more, but it just gets a bit more messy after that. That's great, thank you very much. There's a, a question in the chat, um, can I adapt my own toys at home? I've just seen that one. Uh, the answer is yes, and we actually strongly encourage people to adapt their own toys at home, because um, that opens up a world of possibilities, because you can just go into a shop and look at a toy and think, that I think that would make a good toy that can be switch adapted. Um, what I'll do is I'll just put a quick link into the, the group chat there. Um, there's a chap called Barry Ellis, um, who, who has his own website called One Switch, and he does a lot of DIY guides as to how to um, switch adapt your own toys at home. Um, so yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, and, and that's the link there just coming through. Perfect, yeah. thanks Maxine. Okay. Does anyone else have any more questions or Sophie and Maxine, do you have anything to add that you think would be useful for people to know? Uh, anything to add? No, <laughs> other than the fact that, you know, I don't think that something is impossible because if you can use a switch, there's an awful lot you can do, even if it's just one switch. Just to add to it, the main thing is to try different types of switches. If you try one and it's not working, it doesn't mean that person can't use a the switch. There's quite a lot of different variety out there. Or if they can't use it with their hand, remember you can use any part of your body. As long as you've got that repeated and consistent movement. So like we did on the video, you've got your head switches, you've got the footrests. So just being open-minded and thinking outside the box. Perfect. Thanks, Sophie and Maxine. So if anyone, um, if no one else has any questions, well, thanks for coming today. Oh, uh, there's a question. The, yeah. Is it just for kids or adults too? Um, so we see children and adults at the centre. So yeah, age is not a limit. Um, so all ages, all medical conditions. Um, if you want an assessment, you just need to phone up the centre and we can book you in. And then we'll spend time, be myself and Maxine that would see whoever it is that comes in. And we can look at whether that's toys, gaming, environmental controls, computer access. So the more information you can give us beforehand, the better. It just means we can set things up for you or if we need to research anything, we can do that. If you can't come for assessments, we can also just provide general advice, either by email or over the phone. And we can give you links to like Maxine's done, different websites and different organisations that can help. Yeah, and also all the assessments are free as well, aren't they, Sophie, with the tech and toys? So Yes, that's correct. And healthcare professionals can refer um, people over if they'd like to as well, yeah. Perfect. And families can just phone up as well, so you don't have to have a referral. So it's open to anybody. Excellent. Any further questions? No, well... Thanks for coming everyone today um, and we hope to see you at some of the other events. Thank you.